What is going on, garden fans? Welcome back to the Permaculture Homestead. Hadn't seen y'all in a while, but that doesn't mean I haven't been saving up video for y'all. And I've compiled all that video over the past couple weeks and got a nice little fall update for you here. I hope everything's going well with y'all. Buckle up, come on back, and enjoy the journey. It is currently November the 4th, 2018, and this is what the food forest is looking like today. We have yet to have a hard freeze here in Zone 8, South Carolina, but it is still fall nonetheless. Fall actually ends up being one of my most favorite times to do vegetable gardening. You can almost always guarantee a pest-free vegetable garden during the fall and winter here in South Carolina. So this year, about six weeks ago, I did start my vegetable garden. It's a mix of artichokes, collards, we have kale on the docket, and some other ground covers to go with it. We have arugula, mustard spinach, and then I'm gonna be seeding in some onions, some bunching onions. And I do all these plantings as a polyculture. So I don't put one seed in one pot, I kinda mix up my pots just like I do my gardening. And as you can see here, two weeks later, what we got is some artichoke coming up. The kale and collards are coming up. You can definitely see some of the onions starting to come up. And I like planting in polycultures like this. Four weeks after planting, you're definitely starting to get some true leaves on all these things. You really get a good idea of what is what. And once again, I like growing in bunches like this. The plants don't get too crowded. They do like companions. And what I'll generally do when I go to plant them is kind of break these cubes up and spread them out just a bit, which is something I've already been doing. Back to where we are today, all those veggies are now gonna be planted out under my perennials, like my goji berry right here. My goji are still producing strong for us and they will until we get a hard freeze. And as I said just a moment ago, when I do break up these blocks, you can see I spread them out just a bit. I know that the artichoke are gonna be the centerpiece and the kale and collards will spread out just a bit. Onions are a great companion plant. They help deter pests. So it's always good to plant in bunches. I've never had a problem planting in bunches like this. Uh, one of the major things I do here in the fall is a giant chop and drop. It's a scheduled disturbance. And last week, I took some time here to get my elderberry hedge cut down. And I love elderberry. I've been working with it for five years now. It's become one of my most favorite plants to work with. That is a perennial. It's a healing plant. It grows really fast. It's super hardy. And I use it here as a hedge plant to, during the summer, give our house a little bit of shade. It gets really hot in South Carolina in our summers and even into the late spring, getting about 100 degree uh, weather. Uh, when this elderberry hedge gets as tall as it is right now, it actually starts to give the back of our house some shade and it helps shade out some of the vegetables I've got planted underneath it. However, during the fall and winter, we kind of want all that solar um, rays getting in. We have less sun, it's lower on the horizon, and all the plants around this elderberry hedge are actually dying for some of that sun. Uh, specifically, I've got a fig here, I have some pawpaws, and then just the back of our house is now going to get some more direct sunlight with this elderberry hedge being cut down like this. Now, I know it looks drastic, I'm cutting these down really short, but believe me, elderberry are super hardy and they'll come back just as tall next year. What I get from all that is actually a whole bunch of timber now that I can use for building materials and swale making. And that's basically what I'm going to do with these cuttings. Uh, here's something I've done this year, garden fans, that I never have done before in the five years I'm here. And that's actually set up some sort of an irrigation system for my vegetables here in the fall. I really want to give them the best um, start possible. I love getting greens during the fall and winter and setting up this irrigation is just a simple thing that I could do. I used existing hose that was laying around. It was not doing much of anything else and it was not hard for me to take a drill bit, put a couple holes into uh, this hose here, cap off the end, and then just work it around my food forest as an irrigation system for my vegetables. So. Once again, this is something that I never thought I would do, but the, uh, the, the older I get, the, the more open I am to new ideas. 
Now moving along with the tour, I wanted to quickly talk peaches and pawpaws. Uh, this fall, what I'm going to be doing is really trimming down my peach trees to really short. They have been the dominant overstory species. Uh, I've kind of been waiting for my pawpaws to grow up and mature, and this year they've really done that. They really do form patches once they get established, and I have pawpaw runners all over the food forest. And I kind of want to continue to promote that spread. So to do that, I'm going to be chopping my peach trees down really short. Uh, for next year, try to break up the pest cycle and give my pawpaws a little more sun. Now all the companion plants I got are going to stay here. We've got catnip under my peaches. We have basil still. There's even still some peppers growing out here in the food forest. So I know it looks unkept, unwell, but believe me, there's a plan here. Uh, check out these mushrooms. I mean, we've definitely got fungally dominated soil that has been built over the process of five years. It's taken time to do this, but it's now starting to come together this year. And I'm really impressed with how the food forest has been coming along. Uh, jujube right here is another one of these plants that I've been super impressed with. It's not a common fruit, but it does grow well in our Zone 8 Mediterranean environment. And I'm going to continue to chop down the support shrubs around it so that it continues to get sun and continues to get bigger. Another prize for us has been the mulberries. Our mulberry trees that I put in last uh, year with just a stick in the ground have really blown up and gotten tall. And I wanted to take a moment here to also talk about Moringa. I've been growing Moringa in Zone 8 South Carolina for three years now. I get a lot of questions about them. And I've planted from seed once this Moringa tree and every spring it continues to come back. as as we get our first frost, it will die down to the ground. But if you mulch your Moringa heavily, believe it or not, they will come back every year in Zone 8. Another good one for us has been the uh, Gumi Berry. And I've got those plastered all throughout the food forest. Uh, our five chickens, let me take a moment here to talk about our chicken operation, are doing awesome. Um, we started with some chicks back in the spring. They are now all laying, all five of them. We have two sex link reds, we have one Easter egger, and two buff Orpingtons. All of them are happy and healthy, and I've taken the time this year to actually break down the old chicken coop and set up a new chicken mansion for them. Uh, this is a brand new chicken coop. We got it at uh, the big box uh, farm supply store. It was really cheap, good deal, 199 bucks. We, we couldn't beat that for what we got here. Uh, it's definitely larger than the prior shed we had, which we paid a lot more for. So we kind of kicked ourselves in the butt a little bit, but are happy that we got a good deal on this new uh, chicken coop. So it resides in our chicken run here that's totally covered. And every so often I'll let the chickens run out and of course clean up the food forest. My beekeeping operation, Garden Fans, has kind of been a failure this year. Uh, I didn't catch any swarms. I didn't pursue any packages. I'm going to be moving the beekeeping operation to Lock Layers, the project farm, where there's just going to be a lot more light for the bees and a lot more resources than my small 2,000 square foot suburban lot. I have yet to be able to overwinter bees. I'm hoping they'll have a better chance with that over at Lock Layers, the project farm. My continual struggle with uh, grass and weeds goes on. As you can see, I let mint and all types of other ground covers grow. They've been doing a good job uh, preventing weeds from growing up in some areas. I just need to keep fostering that. Uh, this whole food forest garden fan is full of food. It's just that, a food forest. And it may look like a, uh, a, a wild patch of weeds, but believe it or not, there is some design here and permaculture has literally not just changed this landscape, it's changed my life. And all I'm trying to do is help spread the idea that wherever you are, even 2,000 square feet, you can grow a lot of food. I appreciate everybody, all y'all for watching for as long as you have been, if you're still sticking around. Thanks so much for your support. Please like, share, and subscribe as always, and God bless.